Chair. Oh, the question be now put. Oh, we're getting close. Uh, Stuart Nash. Yes, Mr Chair. Mr Chair, the, um, the speaker before last, Carmel Cepoloni, asked some interesting questions of the Minister, which he refuses to answer. So let me take a good... Let me, let me take a stab at doing this. Mr Chair, we're talking about 50R. This is titled uh, The Legal Effect of Things Done by Minister. And we've heard the powers of the Minister basically to do whatever he or she may want to do, override the Companies Act, override uh, the Board, etc., etc. But what this does, this is a remarkable piece of, 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 um, of just basically devolving any responsibility for, for the Minister for the Minister's decisions. For example, the corporation or subsidiary is liable for any decision the Minister makes. So they get something wrong, who do you sue? Who do you go after? You go after the Housing Corporation. But what, what makes it even more humorous is the next clause, it says neither the Crown nor the Minister is responsible or liable. Now what I spoke about in my last, in my last speech is that, in fact, the Minister must provide to the CEO within five working days, that's all five working days, a copy of the contract. Well, you know what, if it goes wrong, in that five days, if something doesn't happen, the Minister isn't responsible. The Minister puts up her hands and says, it wasn't me, don't look at me, go after those guys. I, but, but, and, and, the, and the thing is, at that point in time, the CEO has no ability to influence the, what the Minister has done. So the, the CEO may well say to the Minister, Minister, I do not think this is a good idea for these reasons. And the Minister may say, no, I'm going to go ahead and do this. So the Minister goes ahead and does it. It turns to custard in a big way. And then the Minister says, well, what she does is she throws the CEO to the mercy of the legal system. That is terrible. But what makes it even worse, and this makes it even slightly humorous, is we go down to 50S, protection from liability for board members and individuals. Now, what this actually says is no board member uh, is, is, or any office holder or employee of the corporation is liable for any, uh, for any decision a minister has made. Now, you can imagine what happened. Th I can imagine what happened. This piece of legislation went to the board, and Adrian Cooper-Young, who's the chair, John, um, John Duncan, who's the deputy chair, said, what? If you think that I'm going to sit in a governance role in this corporation, make decisions for the minister to completely override me, completely overrule me, then you're joking. So the minister said, well, how about we put a special clause in this legislation which says that you are not liable for any decision I may make? Then they might go, oh, well, I suppose that might work. My reputation is still at risk anyway because any decision I make can be overruled. But if I'm not liable for any decision that's made on behalf of a corporation that I'm on the board for, then I should be, you know, then maybe that's OK. I just think it's poor governance anyway. But you can imagine, guess who else is on this board? Tao Hinare. You can imagine what happened. He would have seen this legislation and gone, what? How the, you know, this was a, I thought they were giving me a plum job and they've thrown me to the wolves. You can imagine what would happen when Tao found out that he, the toe found out that he could well have been liable for a decision that Paul Bennett made. He would have gone through the roof. In fact, the, the chair knows well what, uh, what Mr Hanare does when he's getting a little bit angry. But I, I just think Order. that what this... I, I apologise. I, I think what this does, Mr Chair, is this cuts to the very heart of very, very poor governance. So, again, what happens here is the minister can make a decision, but the minister has no accountability. The corporation has all accountability, but can be overridden by the minister. And the board that is supposed to oversee everything has no accountability at all or no liability. And I believe that that clause was probably put in there at the, at the urging of the board because they know that this contravenes everything around good governance. Mr Chair, there is one last point I would like to mention. It's been brought up before, but not, not, I'd just like a bit of clarification. 50L, it does talk about how the Minister must publish a notice in the Gazette describing the general nature of the social housing <clears throat> transaction. What I would like to know, Mr Chair, is what is the definition of general nature? 
because it, it, it really is as wide or as narrow as you would like to make it. And it's not defined in the Act in any way, shape or form. It may be left to the courts to decide, I'm not too sure. But I would like to know if general nature actually means the price paid and the terms and conditions under which this uh, social housing package is delivered. If the Minister could let me know, that would be much appreciated. Tim McIndoe. 